William lost both his legs to a roadside bomb. And after 15 months of rehab, he's finally back at home. It's our good friend, Mr. William Brooks. Can William adjust to having no legs and find a way to feel normal again? Watch out for all that. They've made it back from the war, but now they must win the battle to rebuild the lives they left behind. Can they do it? It's gonna be a big change. The first time I saw myself, honestly, I was in so much pain and agony. I wasn't so much concerned about legs being on, other than I was so much more concerned with trying to get the pain to stop. Because it literally, imagine it felt like, people are, what did it feel, what does it feel like? It felt like my legs got blown the f off my body. That's what it felt like. Pull that one through. Like that. And like that, go ahead and pull her up. I was a military policeman in the Mississippi Army National Guard. Where you got there? Before I got deployed to Iraq, I was just a normal college kid. I studied political science. I love playing baseball. I wanted to have a good time and just make something myself. Still feel like I'm falling back a little bit. I chose the National Guard because I wanted to go to college and serve. I was in Iraq just a little shy of three months. We were driving down the road, and we were about 15 miles from Baghdad, and I ran over the bomb. I have flashes of memory from that point. I remember looking up, remember them kind of working on me, remember kind of the shock and just the surrealness of it all. Next thing I remember was waking up at Walter Reed, the military hospital in Washington, D.C. I was hallucinating so bad, I didn't know what was going on. I remember thinking that I was in a psych ward being held against my will. They finally got my mom in there to tell me, and she had to tell me my legs were gone. I was at Walter Reed for almost 15 months doing therapy and relearning to walk. Take it off and then go and make an adjustment to it. When I left DC, my legs weren't fitting just right and it's been kind of a challenge because they're having to start over from scratch with me and we're making brand new sockets. I wish it was as easy as just popping two legs on and going, but it's not. It's a tedious process. That's a little easier to stand. Son of a bitch. I need to get you a different set of feet. How long will it take to get them to order feet and get them in? A day or two. It seems like every time I take one foot forward, I have to take two steps back. Walking gives me my independence back. You feel normal again. I was six foot tall, 215 pound man. <laughs> I'm not used to being being four foot tall and stuck in a chair. Yeah, hang in there. Where, where are we going, sir? Turn here. Looking for a handicap spot. Yeah, they're all back there. Oh. When you lose a part of yourself, it's just a traumatic, traumatic thing. I cried about it. But at the same time, I don't dwell on it or let what happened to me define who I am. He's had his down moments. He was on medication. He was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. He has his points of frustration. <sighs> But overall, his attitude has been tremendous. I'm not going to act like every day is great, because it's not. Days like right now, when I'm having to wait on my legs and stuff, it's kind of, kind of sucks. But it's a choice I make every day to be happy. I plan on going back to school after being out for one or two and a half years. My ultimate goal is just to be back up in my legs in time for school. Here you go, man. All right, hang on. I want to get back to finish my degree so I can be a more productive member of society and, and work. The Lord gave me a second chance in life, and I'm sure I'm not going to piss it away. Things are going pretty slow. I haven't really found a job yet or a place. There's going to be a big change. It's going to be a big change. The transition back from being on active duty to civilian life has been pretty good. I'm 24 years old and 100% disabled and retired. <laughs>
Being retired now gives me the opportunity to go back to college. It's Mississippi State University, down here in Starkville, Mississippi. Look at that house. That's badass. I got some beautiful houses down here. Either that one or that one's what mine's going to look like. Building a house in Starkville because I love the area and I can afford it. I guess the government feels it's their obligation to take care of me the rest of my life. So I get VA disability every month and I'm making a, a very substantial income. This may be mine right here. I guess I physically never have to work again, but of course I'm going to work. That's why I'm going back to school. Home sweet, almost home. All right. Easy to get in and out of. I like that. Do we need to do something at the front door? I won't be using the front door to get in. I won't. That's the thing. 90% of the time, I'll be up and doing something. No, I'm not. I don't need it. I have the rest of the house to get into. You never know. You might need it. <laughs> I don't need it. You never know what the scenario is going to be. You get to come to that front door, and then you can't even get in. If I have to get in bad enough, I swear I'll, I'll adapt. Well, I know you will. <laughs> But we're just trying to make it I mean, easy. I know. As long as we're in this phase, this is the time that I agree. Things, but I'm also trying to look at resale value, and I don't need a big gaudy ass ramp in the front door. I want a normal life. I'm tired of being different, feeling different, being treated different, being looked at differently. I mean, I just want to be as independent as I possibly can be. I'm gonna be just fine. I'm gonna be just fine. Life is a lot better now that I have the legs. It took some time, but it was definitely worth the wait. I grab them up top, and pull the extra hard, strap them on, and away I go. When it comes to being on the social scene, I was always that guy that would get up and walk around and just talk to different people. So it's good to have the legs where I'm not totally trapped in the chair. What? No. Uh, it's hard to drink and walk. <laughs> Watch out. There's still days that I'm tired. And some days my legs are more sore than others, but those are just things you have to fight through. Look at that cane. Wow. That was pretty simple. Yeah, it's easy, man. I'm not even breaking, I'm not even breaking a sweat. <laughs> Travel, tread through the beer over here. Watch out for all that. Oh, damn it. Yeah, there's people spilling beer on the ground. <laughs> Caught myself falling. I didn't fall completely to the ground. That's going to happen. Those are bumps and bruises I should take. And I have to get my body used to walking to build my stamina back up where I'm able to go to school. I'm able to do everyday life events and not have to ever think about even getting back in a wheelchair to do everything. Experiences I went through being in Iraq and after losing my legs it absolutely changed who I am. I got it. I love to play baseball. Played for 11 years and then umpire for eight years. I miss umpire and baseball more than anything. That's the number one thing I miss. I loved it. And of course, people always try to blow smoke up here. Oh, you can do whatever you want to. No. I gave it my all. I'm not going to go back and do something half ass. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. And I'm proud of you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, you keep so, your chin up. I try. All four, all four feet up. Cross the street. That's it. Yeah. pedestal because I lost my legs and they know I lost them in war. Here's the Purple Heart itself. Of course, there's only one way to get it. We commonly refer to it as the enemy's marksmanship medal. <laughs> I'm proud to have it, but it's just, it's not like I did anything heroic to get it. Sure, I lost my legs, but that doesn't mean that someone else's contribution is any less significant than mine. I'm just happy that I was alive to receive it as opposed to my parents having to get it. We're about to ride. Lemon, beer, barbecue, it doesn't get much better than that. It's supposed to be somewhat of a benefit for me. They love the military down here. When the people say support the troops, they actually do things. They raise money. It's an active thing. You know, man? It's cool to have people do something for you, but I don't necessarily want to be a charity case, you know? It's our good friend, Mr. William Brooks. He was a proud servant over in the war in Iraq, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate this job, dude. Thanks a lot to us. Uh, 
it can be an uncomfortable time. People try to put you in such high regard, even though they don't know you. Sometimes it can be tough to live up to. Thank you for what you're doing, man. Raise that, raise that. I really didn't have a spectacular military career. I wasn't just the greatest soldier in the world. Just somebody was doing his job and has piss poor luck and got blown up. Damn, this is gonna suck. I guess I've adapted to how my life is now. I just kind of went back to doing what I do, even though it's a little bit different. Hold on. It's going to be a big change. Here's my living room. I've got the entertainment system put up. A chase lounge for me, <laughs> so I can sit right there and watch. I moved in a few days ago to my new house. Still trying to get everything organized. I start school here shortly, and tonight we're going out, so I'll be around other students for really first time in a couple of years. I'm excited to go out and just socialize. <laughs> what happened to the lockup? So how are you feeling about school? It's pretty weird, man. I ain't, I ain't been in school in two and a half years. Have you met any girls yet? Uh, I've only been here a few days. I mean, I've, yeah, yeah, actually I have. <laughs> yeah, I've met a few. When it comes to dating, I don't really look at myself any different. What's your major? Someone doesn't like me because I have no legs, they probably wouldn't like me because I'm an ass. Same difference. You really know my name. Really <laughs> so I don't really care. I am who I am. The fact that I'm not shy comes in handy. Walking back into class was pretty monumental because for 17 months ago, get my legs blown off, who in their right mind would have thought that I could walk back into class? You have a cane and you have prosthetic legs, but I'm walking into class. Here. Me going back to school is definitely one more step closer to normal life. In a way, I'm starting a new chapter, but at the same time, I'm just picking up the book where I closed it a while back. future is full of what I can do. Sure, there's limitations, but screw it, I'll push them. time.